Hey everybody, I want to talk about noise fields and generating planets and generating terrain, but if you've never heard of those terms before, this might be a little too advanced, and you may want to start with a tutorial that covers those terms. I'm going to talk about all of the times when you decided to generate terrain and were disappointed with the results because the noise never worked out right. And I'm going to teach you how to make the noise work out right. Okay? So, I built this in about three hours. You can watch the stream where I built it if you'd like. Um, but you don't have to know how I built it. I'm just going to teach you how to manipulate noise fields to get a similar result. So by default, when you are building terrain, you pass in the x and the y coordinates into the noise field. The noise field returns something between 0 and 1, and that becomes your height. So you've got this sort of look with the soft, blobby terrain. And you might be thinking, oh, that really doesn't look like I want it to look. And if you ever tried to get it to look like you want it to look, you know that it's really obnoxious. There's like, you can add more noise fields on top, at which point it becomes basically a block of white, um, you know, a block of maxed out values. Or you can like use a different kind of noise generator, but that's really obnoxious too. I did all of this with Perlin noise, and I'm going to show you how to do this right. Now, obviously, layering noise fields is important. You're going to do that a lot. But knowing how to get the most out of every single noise field is incredibly important. So that's what we're going to cover right now. In order to get the noise field to do what you want it to do, you have to know how to manipulate the values. So all of these values come in between 0 and 1, but we can output them at any level we want. We can say, well, if it's between 0.8 and 1, then that's the only range we care about, and the rest can be 0. Or we can say, take a low pass if it's just between 0 and 0.2, then those are the values we care about. The problem is that that's a lot of weird numbers. It's like, is your artist going to know whether to take a 0.4 or a 0.3 and what that means? It's really a pain in the butt. So I'm going to teach you how to do it a little bit easier within Unity, and that is to use an animation curve. Now, you've seen these hundreds of times if you used Unity much. It's what you use to determine how many particles to spawn or how far someone's leg moves. You don't have to use it with just the built-in Unity stuff. If you say, public animation curve, my animation curve, it'll show up in the inspector and you can use it in your own stuff. All it does is take in a value between 0 and 1 and return a value that's typically between 0 and 1. So in this case, I've said if the value is between 0 and 0.4, it's 0. If it's between 0.6 and 1, it's 0. Otherwise, it climbs towards 1, maxes out at 0.5, and then comes back down. So this is a mid-pass. If the value is 0.5, it's really good, and otherwise it's not. How does that look? Well, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the conversion curve. I'm not going to change the seed. So we're going to see the exact same value, but just the middle. Hmm. Isn't that much more interesting? Now, of course, there are lots of things you can do with this. If you do a high pass, you can get continents and stuff like that. So I'm not saying this is the only thing you can do, but this is definitely a thing that most people don't realize you can do. And it's super easy to do with an animation curve. So I really recommend that you just use animation curves a lot more, uh, and uh, that will help you immensely. But this isn't really as cool as I want it to be. If I increase the uh, the scale, for example, to try and get more cooler noise, all it ends up doing is creating this, this kind of overly regular blobby thing. It doesn't look very good, right? So how do I make this look good? Well, over here, for example, I've got these cool streaky bits. How do I get those cool streaky bits? Do I have to like manipulate the X and the Y coordinates and stuff? Well, yeah, that's exactly what I did, but not in a way you might expect. So if I switch this over from basic to skewed, and I hit run again, what's well, this? Ah. Well, the scale is a little bit too high. Let's bring the scale down some. So you can see this result feels extremely different than the normal result you get. It has a lot of other characteristics, including places where it, normally, in the normal Perlin noise field, it's basically blobs of fuzz dropped into an empty plane. But this is very different. It's got these keyhole shapes and all sorts of weird stuff. So how do I do that? Well, it's pretty easy. Normally, you pass in the x and y coordinates and get a value between 0 and 1. 
what I do is I pass in the X and Y coordinates and I get a new X coordinate. And then I pass in some other X and Y coordinates and I get a new Y coordinate. And then those new X and Y coordinates are what I plug in. It's a lot like taking the derivative of a noise field. And the result is that you move through this little teeny part of the noise field in a very regular way, meaning that you get a lot of really cool shapes. Just in code, that's pretty straightforward. So here, for example, is me using the curve, curve.evaluate. And then here is the example of me getting a new position. So here's the normal one, noise, position, time scale plus offset. So that's very, very basic, right? Down here is a skewed version. I say, I need a new X value. The new X value, sorry, my mouse is going to skew The new X value is the same as the basic value, see? And then the new Y value is just offset by more. Pretty basic stuff, right? And then I say, then get me the noise value of that new X and Y coordinate. This allows me to get some really, really cool visuals out of uh, just one layer of noise. Now I do have to call that layer of noise a lot because that's three calls um, or more depending on how you do it. So you need to be a little bit careful about uh, not slowing your machine down too much. Regenerating this blue planet here takes about five seconds, which is way, way too long. But, um, you know, it's, it's a good place to start if you are trying to get better noise. Now, I'm not saying that you should always use one or the other. They each have their own specialty. The raw pearl and noise field is great at giving you blobs, whereas this is great at giving you streaks. So, for example, if we were to go ahead and duplicate this layer, now if we run it as is, the result will be that we have a lot of weird streaks. That's not what we want. But if we take this back down to basic, now, oh, did I delete one by accident? Sorry, duplicate it again. Um, and leave one as skewed. What we'll end up with is something that's a little bit more interesting because we'll end up with blobs like, you know, islands or, or uh, um, continents, and then we'll have streaks that come off of them. And you can adjust the scale until it looks like you want it to look. Now, right now, we have this issue where it is um, carving up the, the surface in just an endless pattern. And there's a couple of ways around that. Uh, one way is that we can set it to subtractive instead of additive, because then it won't go below zero, and most of that space is zero height anyway, right? But that also doesn't look too great. So how do we make this happen in the way we want it to happen? Well, here's the last big trick I want to teach you just have it so that it runs based on the input value. So in this case, we'll set uh, a maximum threshold or a minimum threshold, and we'll say, don't run if the input value is below 0.3. So now what'll happen is it'll only run when the input value is above 0.3, and that means that it'll create these swirly areas on the land, but it won't swirl up the sea. And if I wanted to do the opposite, it's just a matter of switching that around to being a max threshold instead. And I can put in both. So if I want it to be like wibbly wobbly fields, but leave the highlands alone, I can do that. And the colors aren't working out for some reason, but we'll just go ahead and ignore that. And you can see that we've got the seas here, and then we've got wibbly wobbly fields, and then we got the highlands. Uh, the reason that they're a little bit odd is because the highlands are, the, 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 the wibbly wobbly parts are actually higher than the highlands. <laughs> But you can do this however you want, and you can see that I've got some smoothing built in and stuff like that. You can get some fun results. More than that, you can continue to do this with more layers of noise. So, for example, if we put in a subtractive layer and set it to be, like, ice blue, we can set up some kind of rivers or fields, uh, or sorry, or uh, seas. And we can say, well, I want, it, I want everything that's 0.5 or below to get frozen over and be full of ice water. Well, that's easy enough. We'll just do that right now. Boom, there we've got it. See, I filled it up with ice water. And if I were to randomize it, I'd get a slightly different result, but I still have the same basic idea of filling these areas with ice water. Now I'm using skewed for this just because that seems kind of fun, but I could switch over to basic or even to flat um, and I can get a different set of values depending on what I need. In this case, since I'm subtracting, these are where it's one and these are where it's zero. But again, I could always turn on 
a conversion curve and maybe set it up as a high pass like this. And then if I were to run this without changing any of the random numbers, you can see that I get some very interesting results. This makes it very, very easy to play around with your planet and figure out exactly what you'd like it to look like. And I use this exact same technique for these planets over here. So it's very basic to set this up. Um, I don't have it doing emission or anything like that yet, and I haven't converted the height map over into a bump map yet. But you can see that the basic idea is here, and it, it works pretty well. And you can generate all sorts of cool stuff using these basic tricks. You don't have to be sad that your noise fields just look like soft rolling crap all the time. But I really wanted to make this video specifically because so many tutorials teach you how to do this by simply layering on more layers of soft noise. And that's just not very good. It's not even that it's slow, it's just hard to handle. It's hard to do that well. So by using an animation curve, uh, and by using skewed coordinates, and by using a limit on what, which values you affect, you can really change how it looks. Hope this has been helpful.